welcome. This is my weight loss journey, maintenance edition. I am going to assume you've been along for the ride and you've heard a bunch of these weight loss episodes already. Um, if you haven't, go back into the list of episodes and you'll see Lynn's weight loss journey um, starting a couple months back, went through and did a real time live documentary of my weight loss journey week by week. It was kind of freaky, kind of freaked me out because there were ups, there were downs, there was uh, binges, there was alcohol, there was negative self-talk, there was all the things, all the things. But I wanted to be real uh, raw and give you guys what, what this is actually like, not just some little fitness influencer who's never actually struggled with weight coming on and telling you, okay, y'all, here's what we're going to do to make our salad yummy. Like, oh, <laughs> and I know I can be that way. I know I can be that way a little bit. And I try not to. I am a recovering Pollyanna. I really am. I will always be a little bit. I'm a recovering good girl. I will always be a little bit. I own it. Maybe I won't. Maybe I can change. I shouldn't say I can't. I should never, never say I can't. I should say I haven't yet. Yeah. Okay. So today we're going to chit chat some about that maintenance phase. So my last weight loss journey episode, I got to a point where I said, do, 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 do. I am actually happy with my physique right now and the number on the scale. And so I'm not going to be motivated to push that number down on the scale as much as I'm going to be motivated to gain strength. And let's see how that went. Yeah. Um, here's a really weird thing for me, though, as coming on and sitting here in my office on my podcast, in a room by myself. I know, I know you're here with me. I know. <laughs> but there's this nagging piece of me that's like, oh my gosh, I have almost a year of this out there. What if I get to a number on the scale that I like? And don't worry if that word number on a scale is tweaking you out, then um, go back go back, listen to some other episodes, you'll get some context around it and you'll learn like, okay, okay, this is all cool. It's all copacetic. But part of me is like my ego, my freaking big ego that I like to pretend I don't have, but I really do, is yelling at me saying, what if you fail? What if you gain weight? What's going to happen? What will they think? What will they say? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's been a couple months. I also had the holidays um, here. We all had the holidays, like as if I'm the only one who had the holidays. We all had the holidays here. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how all this went. I'll let you know if I did or did not maintain my weight. That's right. And how I'm feeling and all that. Um, and then I'll let you know what's up and what's next. So the reason this episode is super, super important is we we want to look at this whole topic in a way that is reality based a way that's not fad diet not somebody who's selling you some predatory expensive meal plans telling you these meal plans actually aren't expensive not in a way that's telling you to leave out entire food groups um, or go into a huge like calorie deficit all kinds of things I, just, I want it to just actually be be real a real example of how how this really works in a real way so that you can look at yourself and say huh maybe I could do this maybe this would work for me Maybe I could do this on my own. In fact, oh my gosh, I have a lot of people who have actually backed out through these episodes, listened to them, and they come to me and they say, hey, Lynn, I've been listening to your podcast. I'm down 22 pounds. And now I'd like to work with you to dial it in even more, <laughs> which is awesome. It's really great. So if that's you, let me know, because I love um, hearing those stories. So before we dive in though, if you're brand new, if, this, if you're new to Couch to Active, that's my business behind this whole podcast. I want you to do three things here. 
Number one, and these are in the show notes. So go into the notes for the show notes. You can look at them. Do these three things while you're listening here. Number one, go to couch2active.com, couch2active.com. Check out what we're all about so you can see more context behind where we're coming from. Yeah. Number two, if you aren't already download the couch to active app. So go into Android or iPhone, Apple, either one, couch to active app. Don't get it confused with couch to 5k, couch to active. That's really the best way to listen to the podcast because it puts an icon on your phone or your device so that you just never lose track of it. And you just click on it and see what's new. And you can favorite your favorite episodes, uh, put little bookmarks. It's, it's really pretty cool. Number three, while I'm talking, I want you to think more about yourself than me. That's right. I want you to be selfish. This is this is about you, even though I'm talking about me. And I want you to think, filter all this through this question. <clears throat> Did you flirt? Yeah, where is she going to go with this? Did you flirt? Did you flirt? with a New Year's resolution? Did you ponder the idea of having a New Year's resolution when, uh, you know, inevitably somebody said New Year's resolution? I just said New Year's resolution. Did something come to mind? Those New Year's resolutions for so many people can be wrought with frustration, shame, negative self-talk, or just a rah-rah, I'm going to do it. And now we're in the middle of January and nobody's talking about New Year's resolutions anymore. So what I want you to ask yourself is, did you think about one? Not did you make a resolution? Not did you write it down, put it on social media, tell everybody, this is what I'm going to do. No. Did you think about one? Because that thought is the seed of a desire. That thought is a seed of something you would like to do, and maybe you don't know how to get there. And so Think through that, have that going, that dialogue in the back of your mind while you're listening to this episode so that you can think about yourself and whether or not maybe this is the time that that resolution really could happen. So there we go. All right. One more thing. Normally I get right at it, but oh my gosh, you guys, social media, social media. (laughs) I don't post a lot, but I bet no, I do post a lot. Actually, it depends on who you ask. I want to tell you about a post I did that got shared more times than most of the stuff I do. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the stuff I put out there, it's like, oh, it just kind of goes out and it's like echo, 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 echo. <laughs> But this one got shared a bunch of times and a bunch of people said um, it was it was cool. So let me just tell you, the post was me sharing about Couch to Active and encouraging people to think about how they're closer to their goals than they actually are. And so some folks shared it and had some pretty great things to say. So one person, here's Anne, said, shared it and said, very couch to active, very doable for anyone, regardless of health or fitness level or lack of, I love that, that she mentioned or lack of, because that's really, really our sweet spot. Um, Melissa said, anyone looking for better health and wellness this year should consider Lynn Lindbergh. She is an amazing coach. Thanks, Melissa. That was uh, really great. I try to be an amazing coach. Um, Here's one. uh, Kim said, Lynn Lindbergh is the real deal, people! Exclamation point. And uh, Amy says, forwarded the post and said, this is from a great friend who cares about health. She's been helping me a lot with my health. So I really appreciate that. Um, Yep. And then this one came in from Sean. He forwarded the post uh, where I talked about, you know, you're probably closer to your goals than you think you are. You might be more doable than you realize. Sean said, I've sat in on Lynn's classes And as someone who has worked in physical therapy and fitness arenas for over 20 years, I can tell you that Lynn Lindbergh is spot on when it comes to helping people find a way to make exercise work. 
Her choices of exercise are right along with the same lines as what we do with our physical therapy patients. She gives great modifications and is super approachable and encouraging to her students. Lynn has an understanding of chronic illness that is lost on many of her colleagues in the fitness industry. She truly does know her stuff. So, oh my gosh, thank you, Sean, for that. Uh, so yeah, yeah, those are those are the things. I'm not a big fan of tooting my own horn, but I just got to get the word out and let folks know that, yeah, our sweet spot where we work is folks with chronic illnesses, folks who um, if look at the beginner videos of exercise or look at the beginner meal plans of things and say, oh my gosh, this beginner stuff is too hard. It's too overwhelming. Um, I, you know, the folks who've just got big, big obstacles, um, legit obstacles, um, and just the normal stuff doesn't work. So, um, yeah, just wanted to share that for you. So, all right, let's dive into the meat of the context. I want you to think through, filter it through any goals you have for yourself and be thinking about yourself. Could you someday get yourself to a place where you're at this maintenance phase? You got yourself to the weight that you want and you're at this maintenance phase. Imagine yourself there and just see. So I know, I know. How did it go? It's been two months. It's been two months since my last confession here with you all. No, I'm not Catholic. I don't know why I said that. In fact, if you are Catholic, I probably said it wrong, didn't I? Oh my gosh, let's go. Let's just dive into this. All right, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know, we know. Maybe you don't know. Yes, you do. Once someone loses weight, keeping it off is the hardest part. Losing weight, you get a mindset, you put your mind towards it, you do the work, you do the things. There's like a million different ways you can do it. This is why so many people have success with weight loss is because they do the things and they can push that scale number down. But that maintenance part is the hardest part. Yo-yoing is hard on our bodies and we don't want to do that. And I didn't want to do that. So I'm two months in and there's a couple things that have worked out really, really well for me. One is, as, as you know, from listening to previous episodes, I made gosh darn damn sure that everything I did in order to lose weight would also help me gain strength and gain health and gain vitality. That has happened. That's right. And so all these things of like, oh, I have more energy. Do, do, do. I can do deeper squats with more weight. I can go upstairs and not get winded. Like, and I can hike more and longer and not be dead the next day. Like, that's all true. That's all true. But for me to sit here and just be like, boop, 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 look at me, it's really annoying. I know. But those are true. Those are pieces that are true. But the rubber hits the road in fe feeling like, can this actually be sustainable? So a couple of things I did really well was make sure it wasn't a fad, make sure the food I did eat was real food, not meal plan food, not special fancy anything, make sure I didn't cut out food groups, um, made sure I dialed in things that were in a way that I actually enjoyed what I eat and, and, and made sure I didn't let myself go hungry and not going hungry has a whole lot to do with how you eat. And there's a whole bunch of education behind that. And if you listen to all the other podcasts in this weight loss series, you could probably even preach some of this yourself now, of what exactly that was. But that's a whole nother, whole nother school. Um, so being in a spot where I knew how to eat and I knew I liked what I was eating, and that lifestyle, being in a spot where everything I had done helped me love my life more than I love my life before, made it so this getting to this whole maintenance piece wasn't as scary. 
That's right. It's super, super important. If you're thinking about this for yourself, super important to deprogram, unbrainwash yourself, think for yourself, figure out how this works for you. This is, I had to do all this myself too, right? And I'm, I'm the one who's certified in weight management. <laughs> I had to deprogram, unprogram all those diets. All of us could probably name at least 10 of them off the tip of our tongue. Yeah. And remind myself that all of that stuff is essentially predatory. And all of it is especially predatory because it has they all have elements of truth in it. I also had to remind myself that all these influencers on social media, all these people showing their ripped abs, their six packs, their how strong they are, they are all fake, every single one of them. That's right. Even the real ones who are out there saying, look at me, I'm real, I'm real, I'm real, are at some level fake. Even me who got, does her gosh darn best to show I'm real, I'm real. This is who I really am. I even put photos of me that like two different photos right side by side that are like, this is the same photo. And look in this photo, you can see the rolls on my stomach when I bend over. And this one, you can't see the rolls on my stomach because I changed the lighting in the photo. Like it's all, it's even folks who see me, you, you see me in a two dimensional phone, you hear me. You don't have that. The only way it would be really, 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 really real would be if you actually lived with me 24 seven. And I'm not inviting you to do that. <laughs> I don't think you would want to. So why is this important? It's important because right now, comparison is huge. Comparison steals our joy. Comparison robs us of being able to celebrate our own successes. Comparison makes it so it's really hard for us to see how well we are actually doing. Comparing me right now and saying, oh, wow, look at Lynn, how good for her. She just lost all this weight and she's maintained it for two months. Yippee skippy, la di da leaves out the whole fact that I had about three years where I had gained the weight and it didn't matter what I did. I could not get that weight to go off. And I had about three years where I had gained the weight and I had more grit and self-discipline around food than I had had in a, like my whole life. I said no to things I wanted to say yes to more during that time when I had the extra weight on me than I had in my entire life. It's a mind fuck, you guys. <laughs> so yeah, it's really interesting, really interesting to think about all this when we think about ourselves and, and just me sitting here having gotten to the weight where I'm happy and to say there, there isn't a simple, easy path yet. There is yet there isn't. And if you're there with me, you get it. You get it. You get it. And on top of that, <laughs> I tell you, the lure of the couch is a really real thing. I, I swear, she's like a little mistress. I want to get exercising and literally I go into my living room. And it's a good thing I'm an instructor because it helps make me exercise. And it's a good thing I love nature. It gets me out walking because just grit and self-discipline for exercise doesn't work because if I want to just grit and self-discipline exercise, my couch, my couch looks over at me and she's like, ah, oh, why tire yourself out? I'm here to offer you the ultimate comfort. Just sink in and let the world fade away. <laughs> oh, you think the couch isn't powerful? Oh yeah, oh yeah, my, my couch is like, you've worked hard enough, my dear. It's time to reward yourself with some well-deserved relaxation. <laughs> oh no, no, your couch, huh? Huh? okay. <laughs> I'm not just a sofa. 
I'm your sanctuary from the stresses of the world. Embrace the calm I provide. Yeah, our couch, our sofa, whatever you call it, couch, sofa. Anyhow, all right, let's keep going here. So this whole maintenance thing, maintenance thing, here we go. Let's get down to brass tacks a little bit. I get to the weight that I want. And then I found that I had something profoundly come aboard. And it was magical thinking. I somehow told myself, and I know better, I know better, but I told myself, okay, I got to the weight I like. So now I'm going to just, you know, Uh, not focus so much on exactly what I eat, even though I know the basics, but just kind of loosen up a little bit. And you know what? Maybe I'll still continue to lose weight. (laughs) So I'll eat a little bit more here or there. And then we have Thanksgiving and, you know, kind of loosen it up a little on Thanksgiving and the December holidays. And you know what? Maybe I'll still lose weight. Well, guess what, Sherlock? I didn't. Why in the world would I ever think that I'm going to lose weight without even trying? Those of us who go on a deliberate weight loss journey, we know that the idea of losing weight unintentionally is a fantasy. That's right. It is science fiction for us. And our friends are people we know who say crazy things like, I have a hard time keeping on the weight or I have like, like, just like, like, let them have that. Okay. Let them do that. That's their reality. Our reality is different. We don't lose weight unless it's intentional. And to maintain weight, you you have to still pay attention. You can't just ollie ollie oxen free it and expect the weight to maintain. Yeah. So that was one thing as I learned is that magical thinking of mine. I was like, oh, and and you know what? There's a piece of me. There's a piece of me that was a little disappointed that I didn't continue to lose weight during Thanksgiving and the December holidays. There was a little piece of me that was like, oh, oh, man, the scale didn't go down but I wasn't doing the things. (laughs) So why would I ever think that I would lose weight? And why would I ever like torture myself to be disappointed? Yeah. So I caught myself pretty quick on that, but um, I was also surprised. I was like, oh, wow, Lynn, that's very human of you. (laughs) So that was one. The number two thing I learned, so holidays came and I was like, okay, I'm going to have, you know, a couple drinks at Thanksgiving. Didn't happen because the Thanksgiving I went to was a sober Thanksgiving. So that that was actually really great (laughs) because then it wasn't a temptation. Um, When Thanksgiving did come, I tasted all the things, tried all the things, didn't overeat, didn't overindulge, but I did try all the things. I didn't say, no, I can't have that taste of this or that. Um, And it was awesome. And I didn't gain weight, but I kept it in moderation. And that was just two days of Thanksgiving for me, right? Because Thanksgiving plus leftovers. And so that worked out great. Went back, got home, back onto my regular eating. Everything was fine and dandy. I'm feeling pretty arrogant at that point. I'm feeling like, all right, I got this. I am a month in to maintaining my weight. I just did Thanksgiving. I didn't gain weight. I got home. I don't have any fancy, you know, craptastic cravings. Wow, that was a weird. (laughs) I guess they are kind of (laughs) craptastic. Then the December holidays come. My family celebrates Christmas. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do it again. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, boop ba doo I go in, I do the things. I'm feeling arrogant. I did it before. So I let myself eat just a little bit more. And I let myself um, drink this time. I didn't drink at Thanksgiving. When I get home from Christmas with my family, here's the thing. I was down there five days. And so I let myself eat more sugar than I normally did for five days. I let myself eat here and there and kind of everywhere a little bit for five days, did some dining out and introduced the alcohol. Get home. 
And I did gain a a couple pounds, but you got to remember a couple pounds is nothing, right? We don't care about a couple pounds. We care about overall trends, six week minimum trends of the scale. Okay. So get home three or four days later. I am craving sugar. I am craving bread. I am craving carbs. So much so that I actually pull flour out of my cupboard and I make this thing called lefsa, which is a Scandinavian thing I grew up with. It's flour. Well, I don't, I'm not even going to tell you how to make it, but basically it's a tortilla, a Scandinavian tortilla. Make that, eat it for three days in a row. This makes it worse. I am craving bread. I go to the grocery store and for the first time in like a year, I buy a whole package of bagels and I eat well six bagels for me. And I eat those six bagels over three days. I and and I'm able to maintain the scale ish, but it's looking a little iffy. It's looking like, oh gosh, Lynn, maybe you're on the trajectory. Maybe you're going up, started trending up just a little, but you got to remember, you know, we're only a couple of weeks in here, big cravings. I was frustrated. I was like, oh, are you kidding? How, how in the world? But we know, we know, we know, we know, we know while well, we're learning. We think we know our gut biome, right? So spending five days eating a bunch of sugar and stuff was enough to switch my gut biome to a place where it really wanted the sugar cravings. It was enough to mess with my uh, blood sugar levels and insulin levels and what my body was used to, to have all those cravings come back. So I had to do, gosh darn it, grit and self-discipline. And I hate, I hate when it comes to food and fitness, I hate grit and self-discipline. I really do because uh, food and fitness is so much of my life, Uh, food and exercise, right? It's so much of our lives that if you're grit and self-disciplining the basics of your life, there's, (laughs) then it makes it hard to also then grit and self-discipline the other things you want to do in your life that are also important. And if you have a whole entire life of nothing but grit and self-discipline, that's not really a happy life full of joy. It's just more like grinding things out. And then, you know, after 30 years of that, like, am I actually happy? Like, blah, yeah. But I made that decision. I had to go, go gadget, my grit and self-discipline. I had to go back to making my kitchen safe. I had a half a bag of flour left that I could use for tortillas. I threw it away. I had some snacks that I had purchased for uh, to send to my son. I had to get them mailed off because I had already eaten one of the boxes of cookies, the entire box in a night by myself. It was great. Actually, it wasn't. I ended up not feeling that great. Um, so I was like, I my ceiling and my floor, I had to get my house food safe again. I knew this is what I have to do. Now, if you're thinking, oh, whoa, look at her. <laughs> she's the fitness influencer and she's like, oh, this is hard. Yeah. Yeah, our health and what we eat can only be as good, the ceiling can only be as good as the most amazing food in your house that is easy to eat. And your health will fall to the floor, which is the crappiest, cruddiest food in your kitchen. You've got a ceiling and a floor in your kitchen. Some of us don't have a ceiling and a floor. Some of us have a really low ceiling because we don't have good healthy food in our house. And some of us don't have a floor. Some of us literally have a grave dug for ourselves six feet under, right? Yeah, we got so much crap in our house that we just need to get rid of. So I had to go through, clear it all out. And then I went through a week of going through my cupboards and looking and being like, I'm craving, I'm craving, I'm craving, I'm craving. But I, I I had nothing. And like, oh, oh, Greek yogurt with fruit. There we go. I'll eat that. Oh, an apple. I'll eat that. Like I, my cravings were so bad. I was just willing to 
do eat whatever that was in there. And so I had to, I had to make the kitchen food safe. So I'm about a week past that now. And I feel so much better, not just on a physiological, not craving it so bad, but I also feel better emotionally. And maybe some of that's I'm a couple of weeks away from the holidays and holidays can be stressful. Um, and they can be wonderful and stressful <laughs> and all at the same time. But I think it's also physiologically getting away from those processed, refined foods back to my whole foods so that everything balances out so that I'm back to doing this healthy thing and it being something where I live a life I love. So that's been interesting. That's been really interesting. And once I, once I got myself to that point of like, okay, I feel like I'm back on track and I'm not white knuckling it. Then I've got myself right now a renewed sense of energy around it, mental energy around it. I'm like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. I'm ready. And so the I also got caught up on my sleep, quit drinking any alcohol again. And oh, 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 I want to go back. I want to go back to that alcohol piece. Over the last two months of maintenance, that was one of the things I loosened up a little bit. And I had four to six different evenings over two months where I drank two or three drinks. And when I say that, like two glasses of wine or three, Um, never, yeah, or, you know, one cocktail or, you know, stuff like that. I am so annoyed. <laughs> I shouldn't be. But every time, every single time I drank, I felt like crap the next morning. And I didn't even drink that much. Two, like folks who are drinkers, you know, like two or three drinks. Okay, granted, that's considered plenty. But if you ever hung out with circles of people who like drink, drink, they're like that two or three drinks is just getting started. I would have two, you know, or even two drinks and I would just feel like crap. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I wouldn't sleep as well. Rather than waking up early, I might, I would actually stay in bed hours later and then all day long, I wouldn't feel as good. And usually in the afternoon, I would find something to cry about. And I don't even know what it was. I don't know. My dad died 19 years ago. I miss him. He was such a good dad. Like who knows? (laughs) Super annoying. The reason it's annoying, the reason it's annoying is because the more and more I look at alcohol's role in my life, And the more I cut it out, and the more I go back and flirt with it, I would say last couple months, right? Having a couple of drinks here and there. I'm not seeing any real benefit. I'm only seeing negatives. I'm seeing it not doing anything to help my health. It's not helping connections with people. It's not helping my mental health, which is which is a real bummer because you know what? I actually like the buzz and the feeling of having a couple glasses of wine. I like it in that moment. But when I look at overall, it's, it's, it's not, it's not something that's fitting in with my life. And I have a little bit of heartache about that. And I want to sit here and be all pious. I really do. I really do want to sit here and be pious and tell everybody, I've discovered that alcohol is not actually a good thing. And so I am just going to own it and choose it and not do it. And like, do, 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 look at me, how awesome I am. Like, no, I'm actually kind of sad about this. And I'm not quite sure why I'm sad about it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So my mind is going to shift. My mind has been shifting on that topic a little bit of alcohol and saying, okay, if, if I don't drink ever, what is it exactly that I'm missing? What is it that I'm a little sad about? 
it's some of it is that relaxation piece. Some of it is the fibromyalgia pain totally goes away for the, for a little bit. Um, and are there other things that I can be doing to not just fill that hole, but to actually love my life more? Yeah. So that's been an interesting, an interesting one. Yeah. And, and if I have two or three glasses of wine, like then I'm like, oh, time to make some laughs. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. So two months into maintenance, did I maintain my weight? Did I maintain my weight over the holidays? Yes, I did. But I got a little nervous because that scale was going up and down five pounds, which I know is normal. But I also know I can't just ollie ollie oxen free and have this magical thinking that I'm going to be able to maintain all these healthy habits and all this health I've gained. I can't magically think, oh, now I can go back to all my bad habits I had um, <laughs> and maintain the health that I had from the good habits, right? So that's a really interesting mindset piece for sure. I also know that I have to continue for now to pay attention pay attention to myself. Because if I didn't, I would be on a fast track back to exactly where I was before. So that's, that's an interesting piece that logically I know on paper, I know. But in reality, it's kind of humbling. I have a little bit of a like, uh, in my stomach of like, I just want to like, can I go back to when I was 20 and I could eat whatever I wanted and this wasn't even a topic? Like, that'd be pretty great. <laughs> so now it's your turn, friends. Now it's your turn. Hopefully you've been listening to this whole thing in the context of yourself. And if you had a New Year's resolution, concept, idea, aspiration, something you are flirting with. Remember, 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 you you can probably still do it. You probably still can. And I'd love to help you get there. Yeah, you guys know how to reach me, couchactive.com. And if you haven't reached out before, but you've thought about it, do, do know, I take the confidentiality of my clients super, super seriously. So I've got clients nobody knows about, nobody knows about, (laughs) and they never will. Um, I, it's just super important to me because even though I get on this podcast and I share all kinds of stuff about me, that's just me. That's who I am. But I really, really take seriously the confidentiality of the people I work with. Um, and so, um, if that's something that might help you feel more comfortable to, um, get your goals going, um, do couchactive.com. One more thing I need you to do Share this episode with a friend, will you? Think of someone that you think might enjoy this episode. And you don't have to say to your friend, you don't have to say to your friend, hey, friend, I think you need this episode. She talks about losing weight. (laughs) That might not go over very well, (laughs) especially if you're skinny. (laughs) Instead, send it to someone and say, hey, I really enjoyed this episode and it's been helpful to me. Send it to your friend and then your friend can listen to it with that concept of getting to know you a little better and what you find helpful. So uh, it could open some doors for some deeper connections with some friends of yours. So, oh, there we go, friends. So what's next here? Um, I think in a couple months here, I'll have another maintenance maintenance topic. Um, in between then I've got some fun guests planned for the Couch Active podcast. Uh, we've got some workshops coming up over at Couch Active. And of course we've got our group fitness, our one-on-one coaching, all of that is rocking and rolling. So hope to see you there. Um, Couch Active. 
we're fitness and health and food for the rest of us. Alrighty, friends. Bye-bye now. Thank you.